Recently, I was taking my six-year-old on a daddy-daughter ski day, and we stopped to get some gas. And she asked me a question. She said, Daddy, if burning gas is so bad for the environment, why does everybody keep doing it? Wow. How do you answer a six-year-old with that question? Well, I guess I could have dove into a long-winded lecture about economic externalities and consumerist pressures and the like. That's the kind of stuff my dad gave me when I was a kid. But that didn't seem appropriate. Instead, I told her that we have to burn gas for now, but not for too much longer. You see, there's lots of people around the world working on new ways of doing things so that the energy we use doesn't cause so many problems anymore. In fact, it's what I'm working on every day. Of course, it's a lot more complicated than that. In Alberta, we have so much of our economy tied to our existing infrastructure. Our energy industry across the globe has invested trillions of dollars in the way we've been doing things. We can't just flip a switch somewhere. Even if we miraculously could, the consequences would be catastrophic. You see, the key is in the transition. But the challenge to transitioning to a clean energy future isn't so much about creating alternative energy sources because we know how to do that and we've already got lots of options. That's going to happen. The key is in strategically transitioning from the present into that future. It's about how we think about everything that we do and what we do with everything we already have. That's why what we're all working on is so challenging and the decisions we make so important. In Alberta, with so much of our economy and really our identity linked to the fate of our current energy infrastructure, the question we have to ask ourselves is, how do we strategically manage our prosperity in the face of these forces of transition? Do we walk away from everything that we've built over the past century and start fresh? Or do we leverage our assets to create an energy system that meets our future needs? I mean, Alberta has world-class talent and regulatory frameworks and an enviable endowment of resources. It would be a real shame to lose sight of that. When I'm skiing and I get myself into some tricky terrain, it has to get pretty extreme to want to hike back up to the top and start fresh down a completely different run. I'm much more likely to traverse around or billy goat my way to the other side. And we can think of managing energy transition in much the same way. We can leverage our assets better. That's why at Imaginea Energy, we are committed to creating a clean hydrocarbon. And we're pleased to be working with other EFL fellows while we do it. Why a clean hydrocarbon? Because a clean hydrocarbon is not just in service of a sustainable future. It's in service of an attainable transition that builds on Canada's talent, assets, infrastructure, and resources. Clean fossil fuels? Greenwashing? Well, not if we do it right. Perhaps a definition will help provide some clarity here. Let's define a clean hydrocarbon as one that is produced with no pollution, no emissions, and no fresh water use. Great. Easier said than done, you say? Sure. But why should that stop us? Let's not kid ourselves. There are many innovation pathways that lead to a sustainable energy future, and you're going to hear about a bunch of them here today. And we have to collaborate on all of them. That's how we're going to get the cross-pollination of ideas and unanticipated solutions that can drive real, measurable improvement. I can't guess how long the oil and gas sector and oil and gas in itself is going to continue to play a role in our energy system, but I do know that if we don't radically change our approach to producing and using it, we will leave our destiny in the hands of others who may not care so much about our future. So how do we get there? Well, that's where the tools of the Energy Futures Lab can help. Through getting a good understanding of where we're at today and a clear vision of where we want to go, we can find the ways to create the energy system that meets our needs of the future rather than reacting to the world around us. We can't just stop there, though. The clean hydrocarbon is just a step on the path to how we use it as a product 
And there lies the real opportunity for impact. By creating new products and new markets where new value can be captured across the pathways of food, water, energy, and materials, Alberta and really all of Canada can position itself as a global leader in solving some of our biggest challenges. So I have a high dream for my daughter when she's my age. Maybe she's heading to the ski hill with her daughter in an electric car built out of carbon fiber made from clean hydrocarbons with a battery charged by hydrogen fuel cells powered by clean hydrocarbons, where its byproducts of CO2 and water are used to create the food in her lunchbox, and the ski lifts they ride are powered by old well sites that have been converted to renewable electricity production utilizing the existing grid. You see, maybe a clean energy future isn't a, such a threat to our current reality after all. And maybe, just maybe in that future, the question my daughter gets asked is, Mommy, why doesn't the rest of the world use energy the same way we do? Because she's grown up in a community that is unafraid to create the future it desires. <laughs>